and welcome to this special edition of <laughs> Tudor Talk with me, Jack Cunningham. And joining me is first team manager Lee Bertram and assistant manager Steve Bateman and Jack Devonport. How are you all doing, chaps? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Yeah, good. good. Good to have you all. So basically, the plan of the plan for this evening, we've been to sent in some questions from fans. We're just going to go through them. Uh, Steve and Lee answer as best as you can, I suppose. So uh, first one from uh, Alan uh, William, William Mitchell, obviously his name on Twitter. We all know who he is. Do you see the league realistically <laughs> starting up again and how tough will it be if it does three or four games a week, maybe? This is for Lee and Steve, so whoever wants to go first. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Lee start with that one. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it will start. I honestly believe it will restart again. Um, we've had the league email today, I think, um, all the secretaries saying that the fixtures are going to recommence on Saturday the 6th. Um, we've had that confirmation, so it will be a case that the league, as far as we're concerned, will restart. Um, it's going to be tough, but it's just one of them seasons that has been a tough season, so it's going to be two games a week minimum. Um and we're just playing as best we can for that. But yeah, the pleasing news for us, it was that there is a definite um, a definite wanting to restart the league and the league want to restart it. So as far as we know, we're planning for that next Saturday. Right, brilliant. Steve, got anything to add on that one? I'm having a couple of technical issues here. I've got something that's, some music that's come on in the background <laughs> from one of the players. <laughs> Bear with me. Teething Move issues. on. Teething issues. Right. Well, um, say. So I suppose, I mean, it's, this is just a question for me. I don't know if you saw today that the um, government did announce that um, the National League uh, North and South and the National <laughs> League, uh, you know, National League are going to be getting loans instead of grants. And obviously that was, I mean, a few clubs decided that they, that was reason, well, decided that they weren't going to play on until that was sorted. So what do you think about, what do you think about the government's decision there? What that it's going to be loans? Well, yeah. Uh, again, uh, the finance side of things isn't really our concern. We just deal with the football um, in that, in that aspect. But uh, it's no secret when we when we approach things in the summer and we sat down with Dave, uh, the chairman, and, and we went through things. It was a budget in place um, to last us the season. You know, it wasn't um, an ambitious one that was anything else. It was to last us the full season, and that's what what he gave us per week and. Um, as, as far as we're concerned, we can still do that. We're still on course for that budget. So, um, but like any club, they do need the funding, and it was supposed to be fans are supposed to be back by now. So, we are in a situation where we can afford to keep going. Um, we can't speak for every club, but it's incredibly frustrating for us to be stopping now just through finances, you know. So, we'd definitely like to continue. Brilliant, uh, Jack. You got a question? Yeah, so we've got one on Twitter from Colin Pereira, and he says, to both of you, you've been at the club now for about six months. How would you reflect back on what's been a tough start, given the circumstances in the pandemic? And how has it been managing your hometown club? Has it been what you expected? You can start on that one, Steve. Go on. Yeah, listen, we've been on a big learning curve, certainly about the level. Um you know, the players that we've um, had at our disposal to begin with and, and where we are now are different. Um, we've worked incredibly hard to to try and improve the squad. And as Lee's mentioned, you know, we've, we've operated within the financial restrictions that the chairman's given us, but what he's given us from day one, it's still there. Um, it will be interesting to see how we would compare against sides if they operated the hem away this season, you know, i.e. on a, a level playing field, but that isn't the case. But, you know, we're making progress. We, we learned quickly, um, and I think that's been shown in some improved results. Yeah, the, the break, in, in fairness, probably came at the wrong time for us. Um, you know, we've, we, we've, we've been slow out the blocks coming back. Uh, not really wanting that stop at, at, at the time when it occurred. And, you know, we're ready to go again. We've, we've worked incredibly hard. You know, we had the boys in um, during the snow as well this, this week. So it's not through lack of hard work and uh, hopefully learning the lessons. Uh, we said many times, very small and very fine margins at this level. If you make mistakes, expect to be punished. This is certainly the thing that I've learned. 
uh, first and foremost. The front players are, uh, are relentless. And we've made too many mistakes. Uh, hopefully we're learning from them. And, you know, when we get up and running again, which hopefully will be just after this short two-week break, um, we can put that into practice and pick up some more points like we did when we came back before. Yeah, it's, it's like obviously you said, it's been, um, um, we've really loved it. It's been really hard work though, to be fair. And uh, we didn't have a base, if you like, or a nucleus of players that we could build on that was there. We just had to recruit what we could at the time. And at the time, it wasn't it wasn't easy. I mean, if we got even half of the players that we had in the office at the time uh, that have gone on this season, we'd have been really set. But we didn't. We couldn't manage to get them over the line. Um and the group of players we had, they worked hard, but we got punished early on at the start of the season uh, in a lot of games. And we, we had to shuffle the pack again, and we've, we've done it again another time to, to get where we are. But the group we got now, they're a good group. You know, it's 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 a very fine 12, 13 that we've got in that ways that we can rely on to, to step up. And it's, it's just added to it when we go. You know, like lads like bringing Sam Mantham in, we, there was no way in the world we could have bought him in at the start of the season and lads like Sammy Carravas as well great additions for the football club um, but we, we're still learning as we go and of course it's, we're learning the level as we go but this isn't a normal season as well because every time we get a little bit of momentum going or not it, the drawbridge is pulled up and we're stopped for two or three weeks so it, it's very hard to do that and as much as you can train and keep doing all them sorts of things it's the matches that are the important bit so we, we keep working hard it, it's still what we only have what, a quarter of the way through the season or not even halfway through so there's plenty of games to go and that's it we just keep getting our head down and working hard and we don't we don't get too down when we get beat and we certainly don't get too high when we do but there has been massive improvements from the start of the season to where we are now Yeah I mean so I mean I guess um, me adding in a question there uh, how much of a difference do you think um, all of those signings who came in from the you know when their leagues got suspended so like BJ Christie Nathan Cooper Gus Scott Morris um, they seem to come in and that sort of seemed to have a change in results. So how much of a difference do you think they've made? Well, they did. They did, but they wasn't someone like players that we didn't know about. We, mm -hmm. we tried in the summer to get them players. Um, it just financially, it was just impossible to do it. We couldn't match really what they was on in the, the, their respective leagues. Um, and they're good lads and good characters. So they didn't also want to leave uh, their clubs where they was at as well, because there was a sense of loyalty. So, with the with, when the lockdown happened, it was a case of right. Here's an opportunity we can now get the players that we earmarked. Just because they've been playing in the league below, it doesn't matter. They're still quality players, um, and it's like anything. Like me, when me and Steve got the job, it, we couldn't really go and get the ready-made players off the shelf. We've got to try some and bring some through that maybe everyone else isn't looking at, or look under the stones that other people ain't looking and try and find players there, which we have done. And that's why when the lockdown happened, we went and got. Gus, Coops, Liam McDevitt, uh, BJ, you know, not the ones on everyone's lips that they would have wanted to get chose, but they were the ones that we earmarked and we in the summer and we got them in and it did massively change us and for the better. Jack, you got another question? Yeah, and I think Steve? Steve, certainly from a from a, a defensive perspective, I mean, you know, a huge improvement, which at the time was number one priority. Um, we were starting to create things and 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 take chances, albeit not necessarily from from those that we'd have, uh, originally earmarked. But we were scoring goals. But the problem was we were conceding too many, and we were conceding them in, you know, in 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 short blocks. You know, ten minutes, one goal led to three goals in 10, 15 minutes, and you know that's not sustainable. The boys that came in um, certainly dealt with that. You know, Liam McDevitt's voice and organisational skills. Um, came to the fore, you know, Gus improved us in the right back area. Um, and we added two or three other bits, as Lee said, when circumstances changed in our favour. Um, you know, we weren't able just to go out and, and, and pick what we wanted. We had to be patient uh, and we did that. And, you know, again, you know, it's interesting to see all the, you know, what's going on at the moment. Uh, around what will start, what won't start. You know, you see funding that's been made available to uh, the leagues below has been confirmed today. So that, you know, there's still a, a few more twists and turns, but, you know, we've been fortunate enough to, to use our past 
knowledge and contacts and, and bring in some of those that, you know, have played this level before in one or two cases and others that, you know, deserve that opportunity. And, you know, they've, they've come good for us, uh, which has been a real plus. Um, with by no means, no means to finish article. Uh, we continue to work. Um, you know, there isn't a week go, goes by where we're not having a, a kind of an internal game and, and looking at other options and seeing if they're, uh, they can improve us. And, you know, we'll continue to do that until we're, we're happy with the, the mix of what we've got. Yeah, and, um, speaking of players that have come in, we've got a question, a bit of a funny one from Sam Carruthers. Uh, he says, who's wearing the chicken suit tomorrow night? And obviously for people that don't know, can, can you explain to the fans what the chicken suit training is? Because we've obviously seen Instagram videos of Carla J wearing it and it looks a bit random to those that don't know. The worst trainer. The, the lads decided they wanted to get a chicken <laughs> suit for the worst trainer. Um, and the worst trainer has to wear the chicken suit. It's... Um, it seems to be Dev's most weeks. I don't know why, but Dev, it seems to wear it every other week. But um, yeah, they, they vote on who gets it. Um, I don't know who got it from yesterday, uh, but I'm sure it ain't Sammy Carruthers. That's the only reason he's asking that question. But he <laughs> should be nominated a few times, to be fair to him. But it has to be a really small chicken suit. That's the only thing, a little chick suit he'll have to wear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got a question, a bit more of a caution sort of question uh, from Three Lines Caution asking, what uh, is your go-to training session? So small-sided possession, 2v2s, overloads, set pieces. Oh, mixture, I think, Birch, yeah. fair to say. I mean, we've, yeah. we try and do something different, uh, but relative, obviously, to the opposition that we're coming up against. You know, thankfully, in this day and age, um, you don't have to look too far for information on the opposition. It's all there online. Um, we look at that during the week and we set up sessions based on what we think can help us in the, in the upcoming games, what lesson we need to learn from the past game or two, you know, i.e. some of the defensive shape in, in, in early days. And it, it, it's really a mixture of that. And, you know, we're fortunate with, the coaching setup that we've got. Listen, Lee and I don't claim to be coaches. That's not our forte. Um, done a bit of it in the past and understand the game. Clearly we do. <laughs> Hopefully we do. But, you know, in in, in Mark Swales, in, in, in Renee Marsh-Brown uh, and in Scott Daly, I think we've got three of, you know, really good in what they do. Uh, can set up anything the ideas that come from Lee and myself, you know, they can turn that into uh, a, a session that the boys learn from, that we're more organised because of, and importantly, that they're enjoying it. They're enjoying their training because, you know, sometimes it can be over technical. We've all been in that environment. Certainly, I can remember one or two coaches where I think, oh, cr crikey, here we go again. Um, but we haven't got that scenario at uh, Hemel, it, it, it's working really well and I think the boys are showing that they can put it into practice and that's really all that Lee and I could have hoped for, I think. Yeah, we're, we're lucky. We're, we're, we're lucky in that way with the coaches we've got. Uh, mm. As Steve said, Scotty, um, Rowe and uh, Swalsey are excellent and they're all different to be fair to them. They're, they're not all the same um, and they all do different jobs, but they're, they're, they're good lads as well. And the boys respond to them. And the feedback we've got is the, the coaching sessions. Whenever we've had, say, trialists come in or anyone looking, they say the, co the coaching is excellent. And not forgetting Dimmy as well. We've got, you know, a, a goalkeeper coach as first class there. So that side of things good. We tick all the boxes that way. Or we try to anyway. And like me and Steve said, we, we don't confess to be the coaches. Um, there's no point. If someone else is better, than, better at you than doing that, let, let them do it. So, but we... Um, we make sure we tell them what we want out of the sessions and what we're looking for. And to be fair, a lot of it as well is you, you keep doing the same bit so they, it becomes a little bit of brain matter and they, they keep sticking to it. But yeah, the coaching side of things we've been delighted with from the boys. It's been, it's been excellent. Well, tell them to get watching this. I'm sure they'll love hearing that. <laughs> the <priest is> going <laughs> <your way. laughs> uh, speaking of him, uh, Scotty's put a question in as well. And he says... Scott, Scott Daly? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, how many hours of footage has Steve got of himself playing? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Say that again. I didn't quite catch that. Say that again. How many hours of footage have you got of yourself playing? Oh, I've got. Oh, we could go on. How long have we got? Are we. Uh, I mean, what's... however long you want. <laughs> Listen, what these boys understand is I've got I've got all these reference points. So when we talk about keeping clean sheets, I'll, I, I, I uh, roll out the 1992-93 season, uh, 104 goals scored, uh, 34 <laughs> goals conceded, and I was in the back four. So that wins you a league, 98 points. So there's all this data, and I don't mind sharing it with my colleagues and occasionally with players <laughs> to let them know what it takes to get the job done. Well, yeah, there's, listen, I've got loads of it, and uh, Scotty's going to be the first to see more of it for sure. Looking at Lee's face, there, I think he's heard that story quite a few times. <laughs> the thing that makes me laugh at Batesy, the thing that makes me laugh at it, he's got no videos of his kids growing up, he's got nothing, no home videos, <laughs> nothing. All he's got is videos of him playing football. That's all he's got. He's got a computer full of them. It's unbelievable. He's even had them transferred. From video, a DVD. I mean, who does that in their own games? You know, it's uh, it's incredible. But they are there if anyone wants to see them. You never got, know when you might just need up. an alternative on the coach journey. You see, just for, <laughs> just to have a little look and remind, you know, put a human context around it. In that season, did you get many goals? Though, in them days. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, Jack, come on. What have I, what have I done? <laughs> no, no. Back post, Edda. Left foot, Edda. We've heard it all now. Oh, uh, anyway. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> right, then. Next question. Moving on from Beatty's career. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, how di- it's from Ben Fully Love, our photographer. He asks, how difficult was it moving to a new team during a pandemic and not even knowing if the season would even start? Yeah, that was, that was really tough for me and Steve because... We, as soon as we got in there, we we didn't know when it was starting, uh, when pre-season was starting. Then we had the pitch as well that it was it, it was delayed and we didn't know when that was going down. So as, as a pre-season goes, that was as tough as I've ever known in order to get things done. You know, we, we organised a good set of friendlies that was, that was already in place. Um, then that got cancelled, obviously, because the season got put back. Um, then we had to try and get another set of friendlies. But of course... By the time our friendlies were kicking in, all the other leagues below us was they'd already kicked off. So we 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 it, it was tough trying to get another set after that, but we managed to do it and we got through it. Um, again, the recruitment side, the ones we earmarked, we couldn't get through. So over the lines, so we we went with another lot that that wanted to have a go, um, and it, it set us back a little bit because we had to reshuffle it. But it was it was a tough preseason and. Like obviously now we're in, by next season we'll be a year advanced into it it'd be nowhere near as tough but um, even the coaching side of things as well we we it wasn't like till later in the pre-season we got Swalsey in if you like um, Scott was there from day one so that, that side was good but it was hard for Scott because one minute Scott's planning for a September start the next minute it's an October start so by trying to get the fitness side of things in so you don't burn the lads out that's why we had to have a little break in between the pre-season which is never heard of you don't start pre-season then have a break and then go back into it but we had to to stagger it so we didn't all burn out by the time the season started so it was tough but look it, it, it's just a, a mad season for everyone this has been um and we'll never have one like this again certainly hope not i mean <laughs> you know, i've been around obviously a little bit longer than lee so-called experience now but I've never known anything like it, I have to say. You know, crikey, the, the number of changes. I mean, Lee and I on the phone to each other, right, we've got to forget all of that, start again, as, as Lee said. You know, but we, we, we've learned from it. Um, I think we're better for it. Um, I can't believe that anybody in the football world will have to deal with anything like this. And I hope that's not the case, that we can get rid of this uh, pandemic and uh, get back to some kind of normality <laughs> but it's yeah it's uh, you know don't forget this for, for Lee and I was coming off the back of 
you know, we were still certainly probably more so myself because I couldn't hide it very well at the time. You know, we'd had a really good season um, with our previous club, Burke Hampstead, and, and literally on the what looked like the toss of a coin, it was it was null and void, and we were still kind of getting over and dealing with that, and then had to get our heads around this, you know, change which we're delighted with, uh, and and look forward, and then of course every time we got everything in place that we felt would move us in the right direction, we had to, you know, I'll, hold on a minute, it's uh, the dates have changed again, so yeah, it's. It's certainly uh, been an experience for uh, for us at a time where we were trying to build uh, really from a, a blank sheet sheet of paper, apart from a handful of the boys from from the previous season. You know, we we, we knew we were starting again. Um, very difficult to do when you've got so many moving parts that you think, right, we've got that bit under control now, and then somebody else would throw a, a curveball in that we just had to deal with. But but we have, we've come out the other side and here we are now, we're, we're in a, a two week break. So it's getting shorter and shorter, the, the different things that we have to deal with. And we're all looking forward to getting back out there again and, and, and getting moving. So Terry Adams, has asked, what's been your favourite team performance of the season so far? Which links into another one we got, which is what was your favourite game in charge so far? Uh, for me, Hampton and Richmond. Um, it was it was the first time really that we got the new lads in, um, got, just got the players on the pitch that we sort of wanted to play, the shape we wanted to play. And uh, that was, for me, it was Hampton and Richmond because I thought to a man, that was just the exceptional performance. Um, against a side that have been going great guns as well. Um, and it was a real turning point for us. Uh, and like we said before as well, it, it was on a real good thing until the, the Christmas, I mean, we just lost to Hungerford, but the, the feeling was great just before that Christmas break and you could add, have it into that. But definitely for me, the Hampton and Richmond game was was excellent. Plus it was a clean sheet. It felt like a, a big monkey off our back that way. And it was then I think a lot of the boys realised we're not a bad side on our day and we are, we are a good side. Um, but yeah, Hampton and Richmond all day long for me. Steve? Yeah, a couple for me. Uh, another one of the H opponents, but I'm going to pick Haven uh, away on a Tuesday evening. I think it was our first success on uh, artificial grass, which was an important uh, step forward. Um, the manner in which we did um, uh, Achieve the result, you know, great start, backs against the wall, sending offs, you know, everything going against us, uh, against one of the, the, the so-called fancied sides, big spenders, big budget, you know, so to get to, to get that one, uh, again, fantastic. Uh, the other one that comes to mind, obviously, Hampton and Richmond goes without saying, was, nobody's done that to them, particularly at their own place. And there were a lot of a really good team performance and a lot of good individual ones in the making as well. But the other one, I think, just from the timing of it was um, when we went down to Tunbridge. Uh, I think we ended up with Jake Howes in goal, you know, and he just thought at a time where we were really chasing points and everything seemed to be going against us and, you know, to come out the other side of that with a, with three points, I think just looking at the changing room afterwards, that that moved us on uh, a good step or two. I think um, as the you know the group was um, growing together. I think. Yeah. So I mean, sorry, two or three results in there, but um, which one, Steve? One. Which one you've named? You've named. <laughs> which one are you going for? I'm going uh, Hamilton Waterlooville. You're going Hamilton Waterlooville. I'd say Hampton because yeah. it was the start of the Cuba. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> for me, I'd, I'd put a shot in there for Bath the way as well. You know, it was we had a, we had a thing for going one nil down, and then it was two, three, four, and I think that was the first time we uh, sort of conceded early, and then we come back with a penalty, and then we won it. So 
Uh, yeah. There's a nice little away there as well. So that's uh, one that sticks yeah, in. Good. Sticks yeah, in good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, so a bit more less serious ones. Uh, someone asking, how many millions, Jay Boogs, how many millions did Bernie Christie cost you, King? Uh, emoji Mi- millions yeah millions <laughs> yeah millions um <laughs> uh, he's a great lad but bj yeah. and, and this is what's amazing he's he's the uh he's the oldest oldest one in the group um i think they all call him uncle uncle bj uh he don't look it he's the magnificent shape he is but he was one of them that he, he should have been playing at this level for a long time now um and but it's just his law it's towards actually done the ball was you know he's, he's an absolute legend there so it, it was one of them things that probably would never happen without the lockdown. Um, and then the lockdowns happened and he, he jumped at the chance and I, I think he's really loved it. Um, he got his tracksuit, finally got his tracksuit, King of Union tracksuit probably about two weeks ago. I don't think he's taking it off yet, BJ. I think he goes to bed in it. He, he's absolutely loving it. So, yeah, what a, what a terrific, tr- a terrific lad to coach as well and, and be around. He's, he's been He's been a breath of fresh air, BJ. Can't praise him enough. He's a great lad. Like like all of them, to be fair. 90% of them, they've all been good good lads. But yeah, BJ's been excellent. Yeah, and I think adding to that, I've watched him uh, over these last number of years as he's banged in goals at the levels below. And I think fair play to him for taking the opportunity uh, to come and prove himself at you know a very difficult level. And, you know, he's, he's fitted in, he's, he's scored some goals, his hold-up play has been excellent. And it's interesting to see him almost bullying central defenders in this league and, and this level, which is a credit to him. You know, he's, he's very clever at what he does. But, you know, he could have just easily stayed out of the picture, really. You know, what, what, what did he have to prove, really, coming to him? I know he, that he could play at step two. You know, he's, he, he's had a fantastic time with AFC Dunstable scoring lots of goals and you know but his football appetite is is exceptional and credit to him why he's why he's still doing it as Lee said he's he's one of the older ones in the group uh he's quiet in some respects but he he just goes about his business week in week out and a pleasure to work with I mean he's one of them that He's one of them that will probably never wear the chicken suit because he's just mates of everyone, but he's a silent assassin. He's one of them that will go up for an header and leave an elbow in there and smile and laugh at him on the way down. And he'll, he's, I, if he, I'd be surprised if he gets the chicken suit, no one will vote for him. He's just one of them quiet ones that gets away with it. Yeah, well, I, I saw you subbed him on at centre back in the little training game we did the other day. <laughs> is marking Matt Bateman for <laughs> best part of 10 minutes. Well, all centre forwards can play centre back, surely. Surely, it's, it, they've been doing it the whole the whole career at the other end. They must be able to play centre back, but he'll be uh, if he plays centre back, he'll be playing till he's forty five. Bj, no problem at all. It is, um... It's easy centre back, Steve, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Not not a problem. No, not a problem. No, um, not a specific question we got. But there's been a lot of media talk about JJ Lacey recently. You know, just yeah. sort of. You can see at the start of the season, he was hitting the bar, hitting the post. He, everything he was doing was so close, but it just wasn't coming off. And then you see him do it in training, but now we're starting to see it, it pay dividends. He's got, what, four and four and five now? Yeah, it's four and five, I think. Yeah. Real, real, really on fire at the moment. It seems a completely different player to what we saw at, at the start. I think it just weren't quite working for him. Um, yeah, he had, a, he had a very difficult start to the season, uh, JJ, to be fair. Um He's one of them that when we got the job, we thought it was an absolute no-brainer. It, it, it'd adapt fine to the level and it, it'd be it'd be an absolute success. Um, as the season panned out the first month, six weeks, um, he, he didn't have a great start. You know, JJ, I'll tell you, he'd be the first to admit that he, he, he was had a poor start to his season. But the more he's got into it, he just needed a goal and he got the goal against Humbridge, I think it was, got a penalty. Um mm-hmm. And then he's just kicked on and kicked on. And now he looks he looks the part now, JJ. He's still got a lot to do. You know, there's still so much of his game he can still improve on. And he's, but he's doing it, you know. And when you see a kid that is improving all the time, and it's the first time he's really played at this level, because when he played last year a few times for Hemel, it was like a, it was like a no, no brainer for him. There was no pressure because he was always just going to come back to Burko. So it, now it's a, it's a proper move for him. And, and, he, he, he's done really well. He has done really well. We're proud of him, to be fair. And uh, he's got a good career in front of him, JJ, for definite. 
yeah, it is another one from from our perspective, uh, very easy to manage. You know, he's always there at everything. He's on time. He listens. He wants to learn. Uh, he's a bright lad. Whatever I think he wants to do in life, uh, he'll be he'll be a success. He's one of those sporting he individuals. He plays he golf he off if it's a model. <laughs> single figures. You know, he's a very talented footballer, clearly. When he plays cricket, he scores hundreds for Harpenden Dolphins. You know, he's just one of those, and, he, and he's intellectually very bright. Not not your ter- uh, stereotypical footballer, maybe, in, in that sense, but he, he's a talented boy. The, the thing I've been most impressed with this year, like Lee said, quiet start for him. He's got his head down, he's got on with it. But all through that, with the data that we now see on a session-by-session basis, he's, he's up there with those that cover the most distance, um, work hard, put a shift in, regardless of whether things are going their way or not. He's, you know, I, I never saw that side of him uh, until I started to see the data. You know, that wasn't what he was about. He was explosive at, at, at step four and five, better than everybody else, uh, exciting to watch. And he's had to learn and adapt. And he's, you know, typical of him. He, he, he you know, he'll be analysing it and he'll be thinking about what he's got to do better taking on board the information that he's getting from the coaching staff and, and, and Lee and me and, and credit to him, you know, um, you know, cause like with all of them, when it was in those darker days, you know, the results weren't coming, you're looking and, you know, is it a step too far? And I think we're now starting to see that no, no, it isn't. People need time and all credit to him. Any further questions of fans? I've run out of the ones I've got. <laughs> uh, the um, only one I've seen is, will you be contacting Frank Lampard from, from Alan? Another one that you put in. <laughs> I think you, you replied to it the other day. He reckons he's still got a game in him. Frank? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't think our budget stretches to Frank. I don't know. <laughs> Frank Senior, he might he might be all right there. But uh, no, Frank <laughs> Junior, yeah. Plus, we'll, we'll be worried about our jobs, wouldn't we, Bruce Frank in? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure we'd be able to get a tune out of him with the broken heart that he's probably got right now you know he's obviously a a club legend uh, but as comes with the territory sometimes you don't get afforded the time um, Chelsea and Abramovich what are they 15 managers or something he's had in the 17 years he's been there Um that's their recipe for, for what they want to do. They're, the current one's having his first game this evening. I was watching a little bit of it earlier. But, yeah, it's... it's it, listen, it, it's, it's difficult. The whole management thing is it's, it's a results business and progress. That's what you've got to demonstrate to your club and whatever. Um, could he still do a job? I'm sure he could. Does he want to anymore? Probably not on the football pitch. I've pro- probably thinking he's done he's done his bit, but what a career he had. Um, you know, we certainly can't can't knock that, can you? No, definitely not. I guess just a final point um, for both you and uh, both you and Lee. Um, have you got any words for the fans? I suppose because obviously we haven't had, well, we've only had them for one game this season, so you haven't been able to get like really, I don't know, get like meet them as much as maybe you'd want to. They haven't been able to come and see the team. So have you got any uh, words for them before we sort of wrap it, wrap it all up? Yeah, that's been that's been for us the major disappointment for our season that we just just haven't had that. It's just been all behind closed doors, and um, it was something me and Steve was really looking forward to. You know, a big big fan base and, and stuff like that. It, it's not happened uh, this season. It don't look as if it will this season. So we look forward to it next season. But you know, things like this are important. That's why we want to do a lot more of this because I'm sure there's players now we've got at Hemel that the supporters don't even know. They don't even know anything about them or um, in that side of things or what they're like as players. And and, we, and we've got some, I know we've signed, we spoke about the lads that we've signed from lower leagues and stuff like that, but we got, honestly, to, to have players like Sam Mantham and that, who was captain of South End last year, and as, as long as we can keep him, um, it's fantastic. You know, he, he's been, and Steve will tell you, he's been phenomenal. Um, and if you look at his stats, you know, what was he, League One last year or League Two, whatever it was, League One. 
he's come in and if you look at his stats, he's done, he does the most running, he does the most work, he does the most sprint. He is right up there with them. And people like that are just they're lovely to work with. Well, so it is work in progress. We're trying to blend the two together. It's important we do that. Um, and, and, and getting lads like Sammy Carruthers, you know, he, he could have just come in and just jogged about. He hasn't done. He's another one that his stats are right up there with the running. Um, and, and there's a few of these players that we'd like the Hemel fans to get to know because they're really good lads and they really, really want to do well with the football club. Um, it'll come into time. But for the mean, in the meantime, well, all we do is just get our head down and work hard. But it's, it's not the same about the sport as it never will be. No. I mean, it's, it's strange times. I mean, obviously, you know, we've never experienced anything like this. And as you say, we've had our supporters at home. One game, I think it, it was, uh, and a couple of matches outside of that, the AFC Dunstable game where people were allowed to watch, not necessarily our own people, or it, it, it was not supposed to be. So it's been difficult. And, you know, Lee and I are local. Um, so that's important to us. You know, I think you'll find <laughs> we talk to anybody um, in the nicest possible way, probably too much, you know, maybe we're too social, too accessible, but that's, that's us. That's our personas. You know, if, if there's something that's bugging a supporter in terms of why do we do that? What about this? You won't find us shying away from those questions. We're always happy to ask, answer them. You know, if it's all done in the, in, in the right way, which it is with the Hemel people, I know from my past experience, you know, I had a really good time uh, back in 2006, seven and eight with, with the people. It was great to see so many familiar faces in that one game. You know, that means they're still with the club. They're still, you know, wanting to support the club and, and it, it moved forward. And um, yeah, we, we've certainly missed it. It's a surreal atmosphere out there stood and there's there's no you know there's nothing you're used to hearing stuff from behind you and you know encouragement and you know critical observations if I call them that whatever that's part of it that's what we do it for it's it's all part of it but afterwards you know to be able to go in uh stand and have a conversation with those same people over a beer or whatever it is and and you know Non-league is about the, the immediate community around the clubs. And um, I think if nothing else out of this pandemic, people um, have been pushed, I think, towards some of the more local clubs. And let's hope that they've enjoyed that experience uh, and that they continue to support them uh, as we go forward. It's going to need them uh, in abundance. And, you know, that's for me what, you know, it is a non-league family. With all the stuff that's going on, you know, you support each other and you get on with it. And, um, you know, we play what I call real football, hopefully. A brilliant way to end. So I want to thank our guests, Lee Bertram, Steve Bateman and Jack Devonport for this edition of Tudor Talk. We'll be back probably next week with one of our yeah. players as we continue to try and give you as much content as possible. Uh, but for now, see you later.